I got to point at sin somewhere. It's everywhere. Repent. <laughs> All right. Well, it's it's good that we're here and it's not raining. raining. And I t- I'll tell you, I fully expected to to be under shelter and have raindrops falling on our head. But I, I think not only is it going to hold off it, we may not get any rain at all, which is which is really good. What's that? I know, I know. And my phone it kept on getting smaller and smaller. The the time for for rain, and now it doesn't show it at all. Well, but welcome to our annual picnic and worship service. And I think before we we start, I think the deacons deserve, uh, well, the deacons deserve a round of applause, but don't make it too enthusiastic because we haven't eaten yet. (laughs) So we don't know what they're going to do. So reserve some of your applause for later. But I think they they deserve a round of applause. (laughs) Okay, Uh, we do have a few announcements that are in your bulletin. Uh, of which you may want to take note. Now, Paula, the brunch bunch is, and in fact, because we had an extra package, you know, we've got, we've got their little flyer in there. Yeah, that's really impressive. So, Paula, share about the brunch bunch trip. Um, Tuesday the 9th, we'll leave the church at 11 and head over there and eat and visit and Hopefully have fun just enjoying each other's company. Y'all always seem to enjoy enjoy one another's company. Yeah, and food, you know, that helps too. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Food and ice cream really make it nice. Yeah, the combination of the two. Yeah. So that that's coming up. Uh, we've got a blood drive and I'm looking for Marcy. She finally, finally mailed the flyers. They're coming to me. I'm hoping they're here Monday. Good. Cross fingers. I talked, she found, I called her, texted her. Uh, If I could have sent up smoke signals, I'd have done that. Okay. (laughs) So, yes, as far as I know, Monday we should have, I'm hoping, the flyers. But remind, what is the date and what do we need to do? there is one, there's a 800 number, it's 1-800-RED-CROSS. You can call and say you want here in Sligo for the 23rd of July and you'd like to register for the blood drive. And um, they'll, they'll take you through everything that you need to do and what you need to bring and all of that. They'll, they'll talk with you. Now, so do you need to register in order to I, give blood or I, can you just go? I don't, at this time I do not know. I'll have to okay. back to Right now, I would suggest you call and register yourselves and get a okay. time. Okay. So, it is always good to, to make an appointment because you may not be able to get in. They do take a walk in usually, but. But you never know. But you may wait a so while. So if you, if you know you're going to give blood, better to register yeah. than, than not. Yes. Uh, and we'll let you know if they, they take walk ins. Yeah. Okay. I'll find out. Yeah. You might have a longer wait. Yes. To, to walk in. Walk in and then be registered. Okay. Marcy, is it going to be on their site though? Because they usually have yes, it's listed on. all the ones. It's, it's already on their okay. site. So you can go to the Red Cross, you know, donate blood. It will probably take you right to the public. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. so. All right. Okay. That, so the blood drive and, and Marcy, the, the date 23rd? 23rd is a Tuesday. It's a little confusion, but it's Tuesday from 12 to 5 is the hours. So, um, yeah, so if you can, if you're interested in donating, get yourself registered. And if there's a problem, get a hold of me and I can either take care of it or get a hold of her. But her name is Karen, the one we've been dealing with. So, she's a good person, but she's just, I think that she has too big of a territory and too many places to go. It's a little insane. She was just, she, she was here, she wouldn't even sit down and talk with us. She said, no, no, I'm standing and then I gotta go. So, it's just craziness. So, but that's coming up. That's coming up. Now, Jake. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, the day camp. Any information with the, you want to share about the day camp? Twenty-six. And um, we'll ask and get signed up, and um, we need a few more volunteers. Carrie, I'll be reaching out, and um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Good, Carrie. You got anything to add about what? Are, what's going on with theme? Share the theme. All right, our theme is Outback Rock, so it's going to be like an Australian theme. Um, it was a two-day program, as opposed to us trying to. Take a five-day program and take it into a day. So this, we think, is going to be a better way to go. We're really excited about this one. If I have not yet asked you, or Jake has not yet asked you to help volunteer, I see a couple faces, maybe back there in the back. Come see us, or we'll be around to see you, I'm sure. But yeah, we definitely need more help. And, and you know, one of the things that we, we can all do, and this applies to the brunch bunch activities and the, and the blood drive and certainly the day camp, uh, we've got all of that posted. It's, it, we've got flyer material here, and we've got the date as an event on Facebook. If you just copy it onto your timeline, just copy the event onto your timeline or the, the, uh, the flyer. Uh, then we get far more coverage. And so that's a real easy way to, to uh, promote anything that we have going on here. You know, if you just copy it to your timeline, all of your friends see it. And, and, so, and since you can register by, using, by scanning either the QR code on the bottom of the flyer or on Facebook, even has the, the link to the form. And Google Docs. If you're friends with me on Facebook, I probably already tagged you in a post, so go to your timeline and just reshare. Yeah, that's that's right, and it's it goes out with the email and all kinds. So if you just pass that on, we can get a whole lot of lot more coverage than we have right now. So just by you taking 10, 10 seconds to copy it onto your timeline, okay? Yes. Okay, I have two things. Um, First of all, I serve on the um, Evangelism and Outreach Committee, and Trista Minnick heads that up. She's not here today, but um, she put a lot of work into last Sunday for our Sunday Fun Day, and it was a lot of fun. Mark is on that committee as well. And we have to give special thanks to... They're hiding behind the tree. Yeah. They're, they're in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> 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 And ice cream. So we are very appreciative of what they uh, made available to us. And so, it was enjoyable. Yeah, I think that deserves a round of applause. All those who were involved in last Sunday's project. We appreciate those who came around here to help. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot. Yeah, and there'll be some pictures this next week up online of uh, what what went on. There was a lot of gambling, a lot of money changed hands uh, on the fun day. So, any the other thing is, okay. um, there's two birthdays this week. They share the same day, actually. Ron and Ed. Ron and Ed, my goodness gracious. Uh, sounds like a team. Sounds, sounds like a team. Uh, <laughs> Ron, do you, do you feel older? Uh, yeah. yeah, I do too. I do too, and it's not even my birthday yet. Uh, so I, I can't usually see in this situation. I, add, you know, we'll say let's sing happy birthday, but I feel like that's self-serving, right? I, I mean, I can't say sing happy birthday to me. Thank you, thank you, Van, for pointing that out. Uh, yeah, you can't say. So how about let's everybody sing happy birthday to Ron, just to, to Ron. And I will get, you know, I'll participate sort of vicariously. So, all right, let's, let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Don Lennon. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, and, and De Debbie, uh, do you think, and we, we could talk about it later, 
if, if we could move our anniversary to my birthday, it would make it a whole lot easier to remember. It's way easier. What's that? It's way easier. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> That's right. Not to your birthday, that wouldn't help. But to, to my birthday, that would make it a whole lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, any any other announcements One anybody more. here has? One more. One more. One more. I want to thank the outreach committee for the donation of the hot dogs and the buns, and the other is the Gallagher family for donating the meat. Corey donated our hamburger today, so thank them for both of those items. They, if you if you're not linked with them on Facebook, they are now in California. Yes. You know, with with the Dells and with dance. And, and that's as much dancing as I do. Right so, any anything else? Then, then let's worship God together and since this service is going to have a 4th of July kind of vibe, sort of a thing, we're going to be singing some uh, sort of patriotic songs, some America songs. And they're in the bulletin and we're first, and I think everybody knows these these songs. Uh, let's sing together America the Beautiful. And understand I'm going to have to lead you. Unless Jake, Jake's going. That, that's convenient. Uh, I'm going to have to lead you, which isn't necessarily a positive thing, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay? So together, let's sing America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for space. Yeah, I think I, I see it a little bit. Okay, 
Well, then let's sing together another one that I remember singing when I was a kid in, in school. Let's sing, My Country Tis of Thee. My country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. God's given us the opportunity to offer some prayers to Him. Now you've got all kinds of needs and concerns there in your bulletin of which you may want to take note. Are there any additions or updates on any of the, the folks on that list? Yeah. I talked to Shelley yesterday. She was in the hospital again. Not to stay. But she went up Friday, she said the bones in her face were hurting, she made an appointment. She went up to her doctor's office, while she was there they couldn't get a pulse ox reading, and her heart went, heart rate went very high. Okay. They took her from her doctor's office, which isn't far from the hospital, to the hospital, ran all kind of tests, the only thing they found, she has a UTI. Okay. So she's doctoring for that. But I did find that when she was having the problem the last time, and I didn't know this, they put a heart monitor on her. Okay. That as of tomorrow, yes, tomorrow, yeah. she'll have more in two weeks. Okay. She'll send that away, and they'll see what's going on with her because she had that TIA. Right. And they said she's prone to more. Um, like I said, she didn't stay. But she told me, after they said this, and the medical people here, <laughs> I am not medical, but to me this sounds a little weird, but what do I know? They said the UTI could cause her bones and her face to hurt. Okay. Where's my medical people? <laughs> Is that no? <laughs> sounds really dumb. Am I right? UTI can do anything. Really? No. Okay. It can, okay. <laughs> then I'm dumb. Well, no, no, I couldn't. I wouldn't have thought that either. Well, you know. Okay, but she will be finding out. But she says I've missed three weeks of church, and she just doesn't like to miss. And we need to keep her in prayer. Abs absolutely, she's we need too much. Absolutely, we need to lift her in prayer. But but tell her she's got one more week. Okay. One more week to go. I'll tell her that. She'll laugh. Yeah, I think she will. So. <laughs> So bad. Ah, sure, absolutely. And we miss her. Oh, we because do. we need I mean, we need her yeah. dancing. Yeah. You know, so that's yeah. that's what she... she... Tries yeah. To get other yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, I love her. Yes. So, we want to remember Shelly. Yeah, yeah. uh, anything else? Okay, well, um, over the 4th, there's going to be a lot of people traveling. So we want to remember to pray for those who are on the road. Yes. Yeah. As we speak, 
Logan, my grandson, and his girlfriend, Tahara, are on their way to Virginia oh. to join her mom and stepdad and that family for a week's vacation. Called him this morning and said, praying for travel mercies. Ab absolutely. Where in Virginia are they going? You know what? I don't know. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lauren's already there. Oh. <laughs> well, Debbie and I were in Virginia. We didn't see her. Um, oh, okay. Well, that's it. That's, that's probably the reason we didn't run into her. Yeah. So. <laughs> Absol absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and since we are looking at, we're sort of doing 4th of July uh, uh, this Sunday, I, you know, I think we need, our country needs prayer. My goodness gracious. Um, and, and that's enough said, uh, because different prayers will be offered in different directions. But prayers are going to be good, will be good, because I think we as a country need prayer. So, anything else? Well, then let's go to God in prayer, and I'll open and pray for a little bit. And uh, then you all have the opportunity to lift your prayers to God. And we'll close together the, by praying the Lord's Prayer. So let's go before God now in prayer. Lord God, before we say anything else, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to gather here. Uh, in spite of a, a little, little bit of rain, uh, this is a wonderful place. And it's, it's outstanding to be outside. Although you've created everything when we're, when we're here or around the trees and we're hearing the birds sing and even the, the rain gently fall hitting the leaves, uh, we, we feel a closeness to your creation. And, and for that we give you a great uh, word of thanks. We also appreciate the fact that we could gather together in your name and share your presence. Now, in just a little bit, we're going to hear your word read and proclaim. But before we get there, there's something that we need to confess. You see, we're about to celebrate our uh, anniversary as a, as a country. And it's an anniversary grounded in certain principles that have always been important in, in American history. Things like liberty and, and justice and, and equality. Those are the things that our founders placed in, the, in our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution. And they're, they're principles that, that we find throughout your scripture. So it's their, their ideas that aren't foreign to you or, or ideas that you support. And yet sometimes we, for whatever reason, tend to drift from these, this focus. And we put other things as priorities. And even as we, we think about our nation, our, our values seem to shift from those fundamental principles on which we were grounded principles that are also found in your word. And so as we prepare ourselves to celebrate our anniversary as a, as a country, we, we ask for your forgiveness not only as Americans, but more principally as Christians, for, for drifting away from these values that, that you hold so dear. And help us to refocus our attention so that these, these ideas that are enshrined in our, our history, very history, in our fabric as a country, become values that are important again. We ask for this kind of guidance in the name of Christ, we pray. And now, in the privacy of our own hearts, we're going to lift up to you the concerns that we heard shared. We're going to lift up to you those needs that, uh, that are way heavy on our heart. And we're going to lift up to you all those concerns that are there in our bulletin. Lord God, hear us now as we pray. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather here. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for loving us as much as you do. 
But right now, Lord, thank you so much for forgiving us. We, in fact, we haven't, we've not only been forgiven, we've been cleansed. And thank you for responding to our needs. And we know that you will because we've offered these prayers in the name of Christ our Savior, who taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I, what's that? We're doing great. We're doing great. <laughs> Especially we who are here yes. under the shelter. Yeah, I'm very, very, very comfortable. Yeah, we're here at... At another, the my my fourth annual. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's. Those are some big raindrops coming down. <laughs> and 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 do you know something? This may be really exciting because I have never preached in a place that had a lot of people sitting in the front row. <laughs> Because that's not what Presbyterians do, is it? Yes. That's that's exactly that's exactly right. So, but this is, I don't know if you realize it, this is my fourth church picnic here in Sligo. My my fourth one. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Ed, for starting that. I appreciate that. Uh, and although it may be a little damp. Today, right, a little bit damp. It is nothing like it was three years ago. Y'all remember three years ago? When the deacons, I know Amy does, when the deacons were shoveling mud out of one of the shelters. Yeah, Paula, you were there too. Uh, now, something you may not know, and if you were there, uh, well, you might find this interesting. After we shoveled out all that mud from the shelter, I'm not sure any of the deacons washed their hands before they put out the food. <laughs> but, but just remember, and Peg, tell me if I'm right or wrong from a medical standpoint, what doesn't kill you, what makes you stronger, right? Your immune is good. Your, uh, yeah, it, it strengthens the immune system. Now, I, I got to tell you, I have always enjoyed church picnics, particularly the ones that come right before the 4th of July. I mean, they not only kind of put us in a picnicking frame of mind, you know, eating food brought out, but it also gives me something to preach about that's a little bit different than what I normally do every Sunday morning at, at church. Take this year, for example. I mean, we've been dealing with uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians, going through the letter. And we'll pick that up next week. But this morning, we're going to focus on something that really stands alone. Like I said earlier, we're going to focus on the 4th of July. And you know it's kind of interesting. Last week when I was research, doing a little bit of research on the sermon, I ran across an article that was published on June 24th, 2020. Now, just out of curiosity, can anybody guess why June of 2020 might be significant moving into the 4th of July? Ah, thank you very much. We were in the early stages of the pandemic. And the title of the article, in fact, one of the graphics, one of the pictures with it is on the cover of the bulletin. The article was entitled, How to Celebrate the Fourth of July at Home. Now, in it, the writer suggested several different things that you could do if you wanted to celebrate at home. You know, things like getting some 4th of July decorations to bring your home to life in lockdown, and having some games ready for you and your family slash quarantine to keep you entertained, and making sure everybody dresses the part and dresses up 
in spirit for the fourth. Now, those were some of the suggestions that were in the article I read. And I'll tell you, outside of words like lockdown and quarantine, has anybody ever heard that word before? I don't know, quarantine. Uh, personally, I think the suggestions are, are pretty good, even if COVID doesn't crash your party. But you know, when you think about it, if you're talking about suggestions dealing with how we might celebrate the day, you know, it just might make sense for us to go back to the source. And I'm talking about going back to a person who served on the com Congressional Committee that was charged with writing our Declaration of Independence. You see, along with Thomas Jefferson from the glorious Commonwealth of what? Virginia. Virginia. Yes, indeed. There was Robert Sherman from Connecticut, Robert Livingston from New York, Benjamin Franklin from Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania and John Adams from Massachusetts, who were also members of this committee of five who were charged with producing a document that would be presented to Congress by July 2nd, which they did. And even though they didn't take any minutes while they had these meetings, so we really don't know what went on as they were discussing the Declaration, what we do have is a letter that John Adams wrote to his wife, Abigail. And in that letter, he gives her some background information about what they went through, and then he did something really cool. He offered two suggestions about how the Declaration, how this Declaration, Independence, might be celebrated in the future. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about this morning. You see, we're going to listen to what John Adams said, and then we're going to compare it to some passages from the Bible, and then we're going to apply it to ourselves. And hopefully by the time we start eating the hamburgers and eating the whatever fruit was brought up here, by the end of this little message we'll have a better idea about how we can celebrate the fourth both at home and away. And like I said, I think we get a good idea about how to do that by looking at two very clear suggestions offered by John Adams in his letter to his wife. For example, first according to what he wrote, we can celebrate the 4th of July with joy as we look at the past. Just listen to what Adams wrote. I am apt to believe that it will be celebrated by succeeding generations as the, as the great anniversary festival. It ought to be commemorated as the day of deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to God Almighty. It ought to be solemnized with pomp and parade, with shows, games, sports, guns, bells, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other from this time forward forevermore. Now, that's how one of our founding fathers envisioned us celebrating our independence in the future. And you know what he said about remembering this as a day of deliverance? Well, it sounds an awful lot the, like how the prophet Isaiah felt as he thought about what God had done for his people. And this is what the prophet wrote. You, Lord, are my God. I will praise you for doing the wonderful things you had planned and promised since these ancient times. You have destroyed the fortress of our enemies, leaving their city in ruins. Nothing in that foreign city will ever be rebuilt. Now strong and cruel nations will fear and honor you. You have been a place of safety for the poor and the needy in times of trouble. Brutal enemies pounded us like a heavy rain or the heat of the sun at noon, but you were their shelter. Those wild foreigners struck like scorching desert heat, but you were like a cloud protecting us from the sun. You kept our enemies from singing songs of victory. You see, both Adams and Isaiah could feel joy 
as they looked at what God had done from the, for them and for their people in the past. And I'm telling you on this 4th of July, we can do the same thing ourselves. And it doesn't matter whether we're doing it at home or out in parks or with friends and neighbors. We can still feel joy as we look to the past, our past. Particularly when we consider the courage and the wisdom shown by our founding fathers and mothers. Of course, we know that these people weren't perfect. I mean, my gosh, they, they either participated in or condoned racial slavery for crying out loud. And let's face it, our mothers had to fight and scrap a long time to be able to stand next to our fathers. Still, they had the courage to risk everything. I want you to think about that. They had the courage to risk everything for a cause that was greater than themselves. And the wisdom to promote ideas that are still developing and being applied in situations that they could have never envisioned. And I'm talking about principles like, like, like liberty and justice and equality. You see, we can feel joy and enthusiasm that such men and women lived and did extraordinary things. And so following the suggestion of John Adams, I think we can celebrate the 4th of July with joy as we look at the past. Now that's one thing we can do. And second, we can also celebrate the 4th of July with hope as we look towards the future. Now we don't hear a whole lot of hope stuff now. But we can celebrate the 4th with hope. In other words, not only can we feel joy looking at where we've been, we can feel hope as we consider where we're going. And I think that's something else Adams wrote in his letter. Again, to his wife Abigail, he said, You will think me transported with enthusiasm, but I am not. I am well aware of the toil and blood and treasure that it will cost us to maintain this declaration and to support and defend these states. Yet through all the gloom, I can see the rays of ravishing light and glory. I can see the end, that the end is more, is more than worth all the means and that posterity will triumph in the day's transaction even although we should rue it, which I trust in God, we shall not. You see, for Adams, even though the price was really going to be high to gain freedom and to maintain it, it was worth the cost. And I'll tell you something. This sounds a lot like what the writer of the uh, letter to the Hebrews said when he wrote this. Such a, such a large crowd of witnesses is all around us. So we can get rid of everything that slows us down, especially the sin that just won't let us go. And we must deter be determined to run the race that is ahead of us. We must keep our eyes on Jesus who leads us and makes our faith complete. He endured the shame of being nailed to a cross because he knew later on he would be glad he did. Now he is seated on the right side of God's throne. So keep your mind on Jesus who put up with many insults from sinners. Then you won't be discouraged and give up. You see, we are not running this race alone. As a, as a people, as a country, we are surrounded by a great cloud, a great crowd of witnesses. And even though things may seem rough, and I know they do, and we feel as though we are struggling and maybe have gotten off the path and sort of lost our way a little bit, we can keep moving forward. We can keep moving forward because we believe that the world was and is and will always be in hands a whole lot stronger and more secure than our own. Right? And we can 
keep on moving forward because we're confident that through all the gloom, we too can see the rays of ravishing light that are there illuminating our path. You see, we can keep moving forward. Because if we allow ourselves and our community and our country to continue to grow and mature and not retreat and stagnate, man, there's glory ahead. And I'll tell you, that's why I think we can celebrate the 4th of July with hope as we look towards the future. And that's the second thing I think John Adams suggested. Of course, doing this kind of thing won't be easy. It's not going to be easy. I mean, let's face it. Feeling joy and hope kind of cuts across our, the, the uh, cultural grain nowadays. And there are plenty of people around that tell us that we should be ashamed of the past. Just like there are plenty of people that tell us we should be afraid of the future, right? But since they don't control us, they don't control us. We can make the intentional decision to put them aside just for a little bit. And then as men and women who were delivered in the past and who are racing into the future, whether we like it or not, we can follow the suggestions of John Adams. And we can celebrate the 4th of July with joy as we look at the past and with hope as we look towards the future. And trust me, this is something we can do whether we're at home or away. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, you've given us the opportunity to celebrate our anniversary as a country. Thank you. Thank you not only for giving us the opportunity to celebrate it, but thank you for giving us the country that we have. Help us to feel joy as we look to the past, in particular at those, those values and principles that our founders treasured. Principles that are also found in your word. Help us to return to those ideas and help them become enshrined in our own hearts. But also help us to feel hope as we move into the future. Help us to look past the fear that's being promoted so that we can see that light that is still glowing and the possibilities there in front of us. Help us to see what we can continue to be, but maybe more important, what we can become, both for ourselves and for the rest of the world. Help us to claim that vision. Help us to be, help that to be our celebration. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, we're going we're gonna to close this by singing uh, a song that you know, you may not have sung before, but you know the melody. Because the melody of the song is my country, tis of thee. So let's, let's sing together, God bless our native land. God bless our native land, firm may it ever stand, through storm and night. When the wild tempest rave, up the grill right now. We're going to have burgers soon. 
But before we start eating, be challenged. We've got the opportunity to celebrate our anniversary in just a few days. Be challenged to celebrate it with great joy. And be challenged to celebrate it with great hope. Because God is in control and our lives and destinies are in his hands. And to empower this walk, receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Yes. I, that's, that's what I was going to do. Because once I say grace, then you can start pushing and elbowing yourself to the front of the line. So, <laughs> let's, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you again for giving us the opportunity to gather out here, either under this shelter or out, and now the sunlight. Inspire us that we can feel your presence through your people. As we share the food in conversation, help us to remember that you've given us this community and guide this community beyond this place so that we might make a difference in the lives of the people we meet. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. The line is open.